it bears repeating. Is Ben Simmons a point guard? The answer is no. Oh, hold on for one second. The answer is no. I have so many problems with Ben Simmons. <laughs> really, this video, we won in overtime, but it took us overtime to score 101 points. I know the Kings are trash, and I know the Knicks are a very good defensive team. But when we have played the Knicks these couple of games, we have literally made the Knicks look like the 1985 Bulls <laughs> Celtics. This is unacceptable. This is not okay. It's really not. But your point guard, quote unquote point guard, to give you four assists in over 35 minutes to seven turnovers in the last near turnover that he had. That bow on the Knicks, I was about to be like, if that's your eighth turnover, I'm going to, oh! Ever since, really, the second half of the Spurs game, this guy has not been, I mean, I never thought of him as a point guard, but this is getting to the point of ridiculous. You can't go on like this. You talk about you want to get to June. You talk about you want to win a championship. Not with this. Not with this. You can't. I, I know. I, I want to know what the tipping point is. Daryl Morey, Jonathan Harris, Doc Rivers. What is the tipping point? At what point do we end this experiment? He has no jump shot. He doesn't have a finishing ability at the rim, really. It's not like he's a pull-up guy. He has no asset. The play on the perimeter he is on the guard. He, Ben Simmons, is not, I repeat, not an NBA point guard. He's not a point guard. And the more you keep denying that, and the more you play this guy, at point guard, no, I mean, I'm just going to be blunt with it. You lower your upside. Like, yay, we escaped the night. <laughs> we escaped the night, but it's concerning. The Knicks are going to be like some fifth or sixth seed. So when it comes to playoff basketball, like I'm going to be a little bit sports off with bros here. When playoff basketball against Milwaukee, against the Knicks, you struggle to score. Ben Simmons sits out of the Sacramento game, and you put up 129. And... Tony Bradley looks like the Rudy Gobert type of player, once again, against the Kings. Tonight, you're playing Dwight Howard over 30 minutes. Not like Dwight Howard was a better option, per se. Honestly, on either end, to be honest with you. I mean, Dwight Howard was a better defensive, you don't get me wrong, but it's like, could Tony Bradley have equally been as effective? Yeah. So, it's not like you did it because the center was ineffective. You really largely did it. Because Ben couldn't play with it. It's absolutely ridiculous. Daryl Morey, get me a fucking point guard. Stop digging around with it. He can't play point guard. I don't care what he thinks. I don't care what Sam Cassell thinks. I don't care how they're trying to make this guy a facilitator. He is not an NBA championship level point guard. End of discussion. No more need to be said. If you watch the game live, or it doesn't matter live, you can watch it on your DVR. If you watch this game, you see this guy literally driving into double teams because this guy is a drive, quote unquote drive. Like, 
I don't want to use drive if it be some Dwayne Wade or if it be DeMar DeRozan. He's not really a good driver. If this guy was 6'6 six, six instead of 6'10, I assure you, his offensive game would be marginal. So when he uses his body to kind of rugby his way into the paint, let's call it that, he then looks for the shooters, right? Or it's one-dimensional, and all you have to do is sit on it. This dude is not a point guard. And good defensive teams can sit on it. And the latest adjustment, the adjustment I thought should have come way sooner, is this. If this guy isn't going to run his body into the paint rugby style, why am I rotating my off-ball defender? Let Ben finish over the top of my initial defender. If he finishes over Julius Randle or R.J. Barrett, good for him. But I'm not going to give up some open free balls. And true to form, we didn't have a lot of open shots. Because why would you leave the shooter for the non-scoring driver? Stop! His one effective year at point guard was a rookie year. After that, it's gone downhill, Carson Wentz style. This guy is not a point guard. End it, please. In fact, it's ironic. Towards the end of overtime, Tobias having the game double team, right? So what is the crucial how you get the open Danny Green buckets? What did he do? Ben Simmons was in the post. Stop it. Sincerely. It's just infuriating. So even though we win, I'm manning. Because this is just ugly to watch. No one wants to... No one wants to turn to watch a basketball game to see a team struggle to score 101 points in 48 minutes. No one wants to bother with that. If we wanted to watch a game like that, we would have turned back to 1997. Could have got our uh, VCR, could have popped in a little tape, you know, a little bit of ISO ball. If that's what we wanted to watch. But that's not what we want to watch. In 2020, I want to watch good offense, and I want to watch good defense. I don't want to watch a guy turning the ball over eight times because he could barely trip over his own shoes because he's six fucking ten and not meant to play point guard. This is insanity. I'm going to be very blunt, and I don't care how many Ben Simmons fans hate it or not. Ben Simmons will never win a championship as a point guard for any NBA team. There is no NBA team that can make Ben Simmons the point guard any better, I swear to you. You could have the five greatest offensive players. You could have LeBron, Kyrie, Steph, Durant, all of them next to Ben Simmons the point guard, and you will still get a below average offense. Because he is not a point guard. And the five positions of the basketball, yes, stop them, but they exist. It's real. You know it's real because the White House playing center ain't not paying power for me. You're not playing Danny Green a point guard. <laughs> Even though he had that little step back fadeaway jump shot. You're not playing with Teach Five or the one. So is it only Ben Simmons in the quote unquote positionless? Or is it the reality that Ben Simmons has nice court vision at times, but he doesn't have a handle, he doesn't have control? I have long waited for this guy to understand that TJ McConnell, keep your dribble alive, probe the defense, make a play for your teammate. I mean, we call this guy a point guard, right? When we see little Sputterbug T.J. McConnell, how he would probe into that middle of the lane to the free throw line. Just basically, like, that, anyone could do that. But you'll never see Ben do that. Because Ben is 
I'm 6'10", I'm a rugby player, I get into the paint, and that's the only way he knows how to play point guard. He has no inkling of the nature of the position. And it's so infuriating, and with year five, this is year five of Ben Simmons, I am out of patience for Ben Simmons learning the position. This is about Ben Simmons' jump shot. This is about Ben Simmons' scoring. This is about... If you look at his assist to turnover ratio, it's barely 2.3. That's two assists to one turnover. He is the very definition of average at best point guard. And there are games at a time where it looks downright hideous. He's not a point guard. He's not. And he never will be. Ever. Ever. He will never be a point guard on any basketball team. If I were the general manager, this has already been decided, I will overpay for Kyle Lowry, I will pay for George Hill, I will do whatever it takes to make sure that Ben Simmons never plays the point guard position again. And so, part of this also deals with Joel in a way, too. I've been mentioning, you know, ever since Joel came into the league, really high usage rate. And it's because he has that skill. He has that pull-up. He has that ability in the post, etc. Joel B has a high usage rate because he's able to create his own shot. And how rare is that? A seven-foot center able to create his own shot, right? Well, how much better or how much more deadly do you think it would be? We see what Nikola Jokic is doing with Jamal Murray, right? We don't have anyone remotely even close to Jamal Murray's talent. And that's no disrespect to Shake Milton, who keeps you alive in this ball game. I'm just saying, the Sixers invested so very little into their perimeter core that you don't have, and you don't even have a Michael Porter Jr., to be honest. Like, when we look at the trade, or Will Barton's name came up in discussions, we don't even have a Will Barton level talent. That's how bad this situation currently is. This is a monstrosity because you want to know what a big man needs the most? Ball handling perimeter talent. We can't be relying on the 21st pick in the draft of Tyrese Maxey. We can't rely on the second round pick of Shake Milton. I mean, this is our travesty right here. And the travesty obviously began when Brett Brown invented this disaster. He had the naive idea that the player who played power forward all year at LSU was going to be some point guard. And now the six of front office is seemingly captivated by the monstrosity of the idea and can't let it go. Get me a fucking point guard. And it'll do everyone better. You know, against good defensive teams, Tobias Harris, the shots are being more contested. But one of the reasons they're contested is because it's not like Ben Simmons is an all-ball catch-shoot weapon. The only value that Ben Simmons has all-ball is as either a cutter or as a lot pass. But in order to be a good off-ball weapon, you need someone to handle the ball and make a pass. It all correlates. It all comes together. Give me a fucking point guard. This six a team at times, it's like getting a fullback to play quarterback. It's like the trick plays where the wide receiver throws the ball. Maybe once, maybe twice. But there's a reason he's a wide receiver and not a quarterback because he can't throw a ball. It is the same exact thing. The Sixers do not have a point guard on their roster. Shane Milton is a nice combo guard. Seth Curry is a combo guard. Their main ability in Seth Curry's case is the spot up shoot. In Shane Milton's case, is to score a little bit off the balance, but not on an elite level to start, really. And, and to just play within the flow of the game. 
when you ask Shake Milton to score and play make, he struggles. When you just ask him to score, he's a scorer. So you got a nice couple of combo guards, but you don't have a one. Yes, oversell for a guard. Because when Jarrell comes back healthy, that's really going to help out Jarrell's game. You put Ben Simmons the power board basically near the rim where he belongs. And you get the best Ben Simmons. Every time he put Ben in the front court, what happens? 30 point triple doubles. It's mind-boggling. There's no argument. You put the guy in power forward, he is a Hall of Fame talent. You put him in point guard, and he's sometimes good to ugly. Like, there's no discussion anymore. The guy is clearly a power forward. Started his college career as a power forward. He is a power forward. Stop it. End the madness. He is a power forward. End of discussion. <sighs> I don't know. They have a bunch of reports. Kyle wants to go to Miami. He's a great friend of Jimmy Butler. Whatever. Can you give me a George Hill? Can you give me something? Or radical part. Maybe you do trade Ben Simmons. I don't know. I do know this. Ben Simmons and not Joel B is number two. That's kind of looking like Tobias Harris. Would I want a Zach Levine if I could get it? Yeah. Would I want a Bally Beal if I could get it? Yeah. Because Ben Simmons is not the point guard of our championship team. And as long as the Six of Brass continues to insist on the absurdity of this guy being an NBA point guard, the team will always fall short. For the love of all that is holy, please fix this problem. I don't care about a one point regular season win against New York. If this problem persists at this level, you have a chance of going home in the playoffs. You can't win this way with poor point guard execution. Uh, okay, quote unquote, give the Knicks credit. I cannot believe I'm saying that. The give team credit. I thought we were over that disgusting line. I hated it so much. No, it's not give someone credit. It's get the guy out of the position that he's in. Stop playing your players out of position. I know the Kings are terrible, but you went from 129 in four quarters to 101 in overtime. And it didn't even look like you were going to reach 100, to be brutally honest with you. You literally ended the fourth 88-88. I know the Knicks don't have the offensive firepower, but for us, come on. This is six of the universe. Let's hope that something happens at the deadline. I don't care about regular season record. Who gives a shit? If this weakness persists, we have a chance of losing in the tournament. Tournament losses, to me, carry a lot more weight than regular season losses. I care more about losing in the playoffs than I do in the regular season. And if Ben Simmons plays like this, we will lose a handful of playoff games. And quite possibly a payoff series. And it will not, at that point, have been Jerome and B's fault. I'm going to put that out there for the Ben Simmons fans. If Ben Simmons continues to play like this, he could go to the Instagram babes in Los Angeles. Because this city is about winning a championship. And I don't know if he's a part of the solution or not. Games like this... You don't know if he's part of the solution. Let's hope for a good deadline. Six of the universe. Peace.